Along with the temperature, records have fallen across the United States thanks to a winter storm that's scraping across the country. I'm Carl Azus. Thank you for taking 10 for CNN. Of the 48 states in the contiguous U.S., the government reported that snow was on the ground in 45 of them. That happened on Tuesday morning. Only Florida, Georgia, and South Carolina were snow-free at that time. The snow covered more than 73% of the country outside of Alaska and Hawaii. That's the most coverage the nation has seen since records of this started being kept in 2003. It's fun for folks to play in. It's not fun if they have nowhere warm to go afterward. That's a big enough problem to cause states of emergency in places like West Virginia, Kentucky, and Texas. More than 10 inches of snowfall has piled up in the central part of the Lone Star State. Below freezing temperatures were recorded in every part of the state. That's put a record amount of demand on the state's electrical grid, and then the power went out. Several million Texans couldn't turn on the heat yesterday. Some retreated to shelters or ran their cars outside on streets and driveways to get warm. Energy officials say limited natural gas supplies are part of the problem. So are frozen wind turbines. They generate an estimated 25% of the state's power, but the ice storm caused some of them to shut down or freeze up. Freezing temperatures and power outages are pummeling areas from Texas through the Plain States. More than a third of the country reached temperatures below zero on Monday. Texas is receiving the brunt of the storm with millions across the state left with no power and no heat. We all see the current situation. I'm not going to sugarcoat it. The next few days are going to be very tough. There's a high chance the power will be out for, for these folks until the weather gets better, which will not be for a couple of days. The city of Abilene that has a population of more than 100,000 residents was forced to shut off water last night due to power outages. The lacking infrastructure for these conditions is a major concern for hard hit areas with some families freezing in their homes. It's like a walk in freezer. It's like uh, 34 to 36 degrees, I would say. It depends on which room you're in. 40 degrees is at the lowest end to uh, 55 at the highest. In Harris County, power outages nearly spoiled more than 8,000 coronavirus vaccine doses. Moderna advised the county that 3,000 of those doses could go back into storage, and the rest were distributed throughout the county. Historic lows in Dallas, Oklahoma City, and in Kansas City, the coldest since 1989. The wind chill factor reaching temperatures as cold as minus 32 degrees. In Tennessee, authorities reported two fatalities from the storm on Monday. In Kentucky, the governor is warning that another storm is on its way. He tells residents not to run your gas ovens to generate heat and be careful using generators and camp stoves. Again, I can't stress the dangers of carbon monoxide poisoning, which is absolutely avoidable. Those are casualties we don't want to see. We did not make it through almost a year of a pandemic to lose people to a snow or an ice storm. 10 second trivia. Which scientist's work gave rise to the theory of plate tectonics? Charles Richter, Inga Lehman, Alfred Wegener, or Ian Malcolm? Wegener's theory of continental drift led to the theory of plate tectonics. Wegener's book on continental drift was published in 1915. It was not well received in the scientific community. But over the decades, as more discoveries were made, the theory of plate tectonics gained acceptance in the 1960s, and that helped explain Wegener's theory of continental drift. Research on this continues today. This is an animated computer model that shows the movement of tectonic plates, the giant theoretical chunks that compose the Earth's outer crust. Geologists are using this to examine how plates might have interacted along their boundaries. It's the first model of its kind, and researchers hope it'll help geologists understand the history of our planet. Meantime, technology is trying to understand the expressions of your face. An artificial intelligence tool is gaining usage at a time when more people are learning and working online. Critics don't like the idea of laptop cameras, for instance, tracking users' faces, especially when it comes to students. But applications for this could go well beyond the online classroom. Our faces say a lot about us. Whether we're happy, angry, or sad, facial expressions are a big part of how we communicate with each other. 
but what about when we can't see each other's faces? For teachers around the world, it's become a problem, including in Hong Kong. When most of Ka Tim Chu's classes went online, he struggled to stay connected to his students through the screen. When I'm standing in front of the classroom, I always observe the reaction and then the face, the emotion of students. We cannot see face-to-face -face teaching at this moment and we, we don't understand their progress. One solution is helping Chu to read the room. Artificial intelligence that analyzes students' emotions as they learn. It comes from a local startup, Find Solution AI. We develop motivation AI, especially to help kids using emotion detection to observe how they learn and motivate them to learn in a better way. We can motivate them by giving some easy questions. We will also give them some video chunks to guide them when they are not understanding something new. So it's like a teacher sitting next to the kid, but the teacher is not there, but it's the software. Lam says the software works via your webcam or camera, measuring the position of your eyes, eyebrows, mouth, and other features to detect for six emotions, happiness, sadness, anger, fear, disgust, and surprise. For example, if the corners of your mouth are raised, this would tell the AI that you are happy, while a wrinkled nose would signal disgust. And the AI is pretty good at it, Lam says. For the accuracy for the emotion detection, we scored around 85%. But can just six facial expressions really convey a range of feelings? According to experts, the answer, like emotion, is complex. So there are what we call primary emotions. So you can tell somebody's angry or sad or happy from any culture pretty easily. But there are others, what we call secondary emotions, that can be harder and can be cultural dependent and can be gender dependent. We're not able to recognize secondary emotions with such high accuracy. Machines can already do that better than some human beings. We would like to train the machines to be not just as good as humans, that it should be better than the average human. Find Solution AI is one of a number of developers racing to advance the technology. Already, Lam says the number of schools using its learning platform has more than doubled since the pandemic began. As users grow, so do concerns around privacy. In the classroom, we need to get their consent, right, to be a part of this program, to be monitored in terms of facial expressions. More importantly, uh, we need to explain to them how we use their data. Lam says Find Solutions AI software doesn't store videos or photos, and parents or students can always choose to turn off the camera. This feature could give the startup an edge as global demand grows for machines that can read our emotions. It's a business that's set to reach $56 billion by 2024. With benefits not just for the virtual classroom, but also the virtual workplace, from employee well-being to online meetings. During the webinar or during the video conferencing, you want to know if that person is engaging or they just turn on the camera, but that person is not literally there. So that is the reason why we also expecting to move forward to other industry. Face-to-face -face communication is still a way off for many people, but a solution in the meantime could be staring us right in the face. So just how big a drawing can one person do with a marker? That was the challenge for an art teacher in Philadelphia, and this is the work she drew. It apparently set a record for the largest drawing ever made by an individual. Its size, 6,450 square feet. Its features, sky and sea with city buildings in between. Its total time to complete, 63 hours. The work is made up of the kind of doodles you might have done in class, just a wee bit bigger. So I guess it was a pretty sharpie idea to cray all over the room because in making her mark, she met the mark while marking up the floor in a mark or break record attempt that is pretty remarkable. We'll just have to see how permanent it is. <laughs> Shout out today goes out to Rising Sun High School. It is in the picturesque sounding town of Rising Sun, Maryland. They did the one thing you can do to get a mention on CNN 10. They subscribed and left a comment on our most recent show at youtube.com slash CNN 10. I'm Coral Azuz. Thank you.